Hi guys, this is Dr. Margolin. Um, we got an interesting question today. First of all, again, I would like to thank everybody who helps us to keep the program and the channel going. Um, the question today is about omega-3 um, and its role uh, in inflammation control and pain management. The person asked a very good question. Um, he said, you know, he learned at school that fat kind of clogs the arteries and so all fats should be bad. So now he hears that low fat actually can be not so good. And there are healthy fat, something called omega-3. What is omega? What is free? Why is it good? And how is that related to pain management? This is the topic of the video today. Hi, I've been coming here to Dr. Margolin's office for a little over two years. And um, after following recommendations from Dr. Margolin to cut down on my sugar, and reduce my pain. Not only have I reduced my pain, but I have lost 60 pounds this year. And I feel a lot better overall with the plan that we have in place now and the weight loss, I feel better than I have in a very, very long time. Hi, my name is Craig Ferguson and I've been coming here at uh, Pain Clinic for about, uh, four months now and everything is just turned out for the best and and without the doctor I would just be in agonizing pain. In the first part of this video, I'll try to explain to you a little bit what omega-3 means, um, give you background about healthy and unhealthy fat. Now, we try to keep our videos short, so I want to give you an idea and I throw some terms at you. Uh, it's impossible to cover it in 10 minutes, but you can Google, you can read, and you can send us questions, you can uh, agree or disagree. Okay. So, um, to keep things simple, um, let me give you a background about fats. There is something called saturated or trans fat. Those fats uh, include basically anything, which, any fat which is edible and is solid uh, um, under room temperature. So it could be animal uh, fat, for example, fatty meat, um, margarine, um, which is not animal, it's synthetic, one of the worst, uh, cream, butter, and anything else, any fat which is edible and solid under room temperature. As a rule of thumb, it's a very bad fat. That's the fat that they, the guy who asked the question learned at school. It really clogs the arteries, increases inflammation. It, not, it also has effect on, on the bad cholesterol, something called LDL. It increases bad cholesterol, it oxidizes bad cholesterol, um, and it lowers good cholesterol, and it really clogs the arteries. So it's something you want to stay away from. And by the way, I want to rem remind you guys that if you go to uh, the video about sugar on our channel, we show that actually excess of sugar, for example, a so-called low-fat diet, can also increase VLDL, which is a precursor to LDL, the bad cholesterol. So what can we do? So let's look at unsaturated fat, which kind of better? There is something called monounsaturated fat, which includes olives, seeds, nuts, which is a good fat and actually can be consumed unlimited for our purposes, and polyunsaturated fat, which is divided, again, for the purpose of this simple presentation to omega-6, and here we get omega-3. And I'm going to explain to you what the difference is and how to deal with that. Now, um, omega-6, it's almost in everything we eat in American diet. It has corn, corn oil, um, sunflower oil, um, and other oils. And actual animals that are fed fed with this type of uh, food, they also uh, reach in omega-6. What we're deficient is, is omega-3. And what is omega-3? Omega is a number of double bonds in the molecule. Just 
so you, you'll understand it. And those fat, uh, fatty acid molecules that have only three double bonds called omega-3. And they're kind of difficult to get in our diet. The ideal ratio between omega-6 and omega-3 is about two to one. And uh, uh, in our diet, we get 20 to one, unless we don't monitor it. So our goal is to increase omega-3 healthy fats to increase this ratio. Now, um, you can eat wild fish, um, you can get it from some other sources, but again, somewhat tricky, somewhat difficult because um, it's hard to get wild fish. Um, and if the fish grown in the, in the farm can be omega-6, and if you get wild fish, you want to make sure that it's not loaded with mercury and other toxins. So how we supplement omega-3? That's the topic of the second part of this video. So now we understand what omega-3 is and we kind of understand we need to take supplements. So what to take and how much is good? Is there, is there such thing as too much? What, what you do if you're a vegetarian or vegan? Again, we're neutral on this subject. Um, respect your choices. Um, this is a pretty good uh, Carlson Elite Omega-3. It's 800 milligrams and in serving sizes, one soft gel. So if you take one soap gel of this supplement, you get 800 um, milligrams a day. Is that good? Is that enough? Actually, most studies showed that you need to get between two to four grams. And some people say there is in this diapason, this range between two to four grams, there are different opinions. There are some people prefer close to two. There are many people say get four, but I would say two way above. And 800 milligrams is not, a, is not enough. And that's why some people say, I try to take it, it doesn't work. Again, like we discussed with other supplements, it's not a miracle drug. It's not a medication. You're changing your body composition. So first, you need to stay away from bad inflammatory stuff like sugar, right? Like um, junk food, um, maybe dairy. Please refer to our previous videos. And once you've done that, you should need to take omega-3, about two grams a day, and you need to take it for a prolonged period of time. I would say be ready to take it for six months. Sometimes you'll see results much earlier, but I would say take it, be ready to take it for six months patiently, daily. How you take two grams a day? This is Maxi Omega-3. It has 2,000 milligrams in uh, two soft gels. So if you take two soft gels, you get 2000 milligrams and that gets you to two grams. Now, if you take four, it gets you to four grams. And if you take three, you're in between. So you can get to this range of two to four grams. Again, if you take 800 milligram capsule, it's very difficult for you. You take three capsules, you just um, above two, two grams, right? You're 2.4 grams and um, you need, really need to take five, six capsules a day, which is not practical. This is much more practical. And again, we're neutral about um, the company. You can choose your own company, try to look for standardized GMP or any other standard testing that verifies basically that it is omega free. And you want to look for wild fish, right? This is your, um, this is your goal. Now, what do you do if you are vegan or vegetarian? You can take uh, premium flaxseed capsules. Those capsules also reach in omega-3, but this is a different type of, ome of omega-3 um, um, uh, uh, composition. And there is a debate which one is better. I think that for many purposes, actually anti-inflammatory purposes, cognitive effect, maybe fish oil is better, but you, you, it's still very good, very good way to supplement it. Again, you need to take about two grams a day. Another way to get um, omega free is to get chia seeds, right? You can get it in smoothies, mix it with whatever you can. This is a very good source of omega free. There are also a lot of flaxseed snacks or um, uh, flour meals, flaxseed meals. It's also a good source of omega three. Make sure it's not loaded with sugar. So you can 
um, basically either use animal sauce or vegetarian sauce or combine both. Your goal, again, that this ratio between omega-3 to omega-6 would be 2 to 1. So you need to decrease omega-6 as much as you can and uh, stay away from corn, right? Um, and other junk and other junk food uh, and increasing good fat, increasing omega-3 um, uh, by taking supplements, by eating avocado, by increasing um, olive, uh, consumption of olive oil, nuts, and other healthy foods. It's a process. It would take you four to six months, but it's very rewarding because omega-3 actually does decrease inflammation. Um, first, it works through cell membrane, and we, or some of this acid, uh, uh, fatty acids incorporates in cell membranes, and arachidonic acid, which is one of the key components of the inflammatory cascade is actually omega-6 uh, fatty acid. So there, are, um, there is signaling through the membrane that helps to decrease inflammation. And in addition, there is something called epigenetics. Now we, we know that certain foods turn on and off certain genes. So omega-3 turns good genes, decrease inflammation. Um, this type of transition also helps you to lose weight and in stabilize and improve your mood. So through different mechanism, I think it's a, it's a very good mood a move if you're in chronic pain. Um, as I explained, it should be done in conjunction with cutting sugar, good exercise and other ideas that we presented before. Thank you so much for participating in our channel. Don't be shy to ask questions and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.